Welcome back to the program. I'm in conversation with Robin Almeida from Mumbai. Robin, it's been fantastic so far hearing uh, yeah. your story. I'm eager to hear the rest as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, you had this encounter with God and you was uh, dramatically uh, delivered from uh, nicotine. Tell us, uh, how else did your life change? Uh, it was kind of uh, a transition from a familiar world to an unfamiliar one. Uh, if you take a blind man from a familiar ambience, the blind man has already counted steps and he knows that three steps from to my right, I see the elevator, four steps to my left, I see the fridge, the television set. He has counted everything. And all of a sudden, you take that blind man from a familiar ambience to an unfamiliar one. So I was introduced to a completely new world, which, which was completely new to me. And I never knew what to do. So I sort of uh, kind of asked guidance from the one who created that new world. And that's where I was dependent on my creator. And, and um, bit by bit, step by step, God was taking me through this new life, as I call it, new life, the new um, world, the world full of supernatural experiences. Everything was so supernatural there. Really? Yeah. You're losing me a bit here. It's all getting super spiritual. Yes. What do you actually mean by that? A new world, a, a spiritual world, what ah. supernatural world? I'm glad what you, do you asked mean? me. Uh, le let me put it in Hindi. You know, uh, we always say, Mano to khuda hai, nahi mano to patar hai. Hmm. We can see the most divine experience where the Israelites, three million Israelites were brought out. Moses made them cross the Red Sea. God opened the Red Sea for them, made a path in the wilderness. Uh, it, it made a way in between the sea, ripped it apart for them. They came out and they behaved so cold and callous to that great miracle of God. We can live every day of our life thinking that every minute, every second, every moment of our life, is supernatural because I'm breathing, I'm, 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 my heart is beating. This is supernatural. Uh, this is not natural. Stuff that wouldn't happen for other people. God does it for us. Uh, you know, somebody meets up with an accident, but God protects you. You, you can just feel the breeze of that truck passing by, but God saves you. You can take all of this as a coincidence. Isn't that, isn't that just uh, good, good luck? Isn't it just good luck? Uh, I'm glad you came up with that word, but I read a book where it says blessed. I have never said, I've never read lucky are those who are in spirit, lucky are those. No, no, it said blessed are those who are poor in spirit, blessed are those. So I would call myself blessed. Uh, luck is something which is unplanned and it saved you. But for me, everything is planned. My God, even before I formed, I was formed in my mother's womb, everything was pre-planned for me. So I would say I'm blessed rather than lucky. Yeah, well, you certainly look blessed. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, really, I mean, isn't everything that we see here, isn't, isn't that it, the, the here and now? Surely that's it, isn't it? When we, when we pass on from here, when we die, we die, and that's it, isn't it? Very true, very true. That, that, that's what I think 16 years ago I used to think like that. <laughs> that was my thought process, but uh, something changed along the way. Um, and somebody who thinks uh, like that, I respect, I, I respect. But uh, yesterday I was thinking, I was just assuming, and I do that exercise every now and then. I just Im try to imagine, I cannot fully fathom that, but I try to imagine my life without God. And I find myself purposeless. Uh, I find my entire life meaningless. So what actually happened is when on March 4th, when I accepted Christ into my heart, it gave a meaning to my life. It gave a meaning. Now everything is about Christ. Everything is about him. Without him, I can't think of anything, anything. If, if, if th there was a glass of water here and as I speak, and if the water spills down for somebody else, it might just be, oh, the, the glass fell down. But I would say, thank God. You know, for me, God was involved in that too. You know, so uh, I take everything as the plan of God. And uh, I would not uh, like to dilute the presence of God in my life. Every step that I take, every breath that I breathe, even now, he's here with us. And even now, he's there with you, 
watching you, watching over you, protecting you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been here today. The people that studied with you, your colleagues, your classmates, many of them are not in this world today. But he saved you, he protected you. This could not be a coincidence. It is the loving hand of God upon your life, my life, your life. Listening to you right now, I'm sure there's a lot of people um, who, would, who would say and think that you're brainwashed. What would you say to that? I would say I am brainwashed. This brain had a lot of filth in there. God washed it. <laughs> I am brainwashed. And I want you to also go into that brainwashing process. Wash it. It's filled with a lot of garbage. You know, let me tell you something. One of the major uh, 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 challenges is not to learn. I've seen that. One of the major challenges is to unlearn what we have learned in the past. And, uh, you know, we have learned things like, you know, uh, this world all of a sudden just evolved and all of a sudden with a big bang theory things appeared and and all of those things and when we get the truth so to say it fights with the head knowledge and there is a war inside of us and ultimately the victory so let me tell you there, there is a truth and there is a fact if a man struggling with cancer comes here, the truth, the truth is that he is healed, according to Isaiah 53, 5. But the fact is that the tumor is still on his body. There's a difference between the truth and the fact. So I got the truth. Whatever the fact says, I know the truth is one. Fact might change, but truth will never change. Hmm. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Would you say that um, this positive thinking and, and uh, claiming and, or believing in what the Bible says and these scriptures, that uh, it helps us to just have a case of mind over matter? Is it mind over matter, would you say? Um, let me tell you one thing. There was this old lady who lived a very, very spiritual life, grandmama. And uh, she turned 80, prayerful, loving, obedient to God, obedient to whatever God said. And the grandkids one day asked, Mama, one day if you die and uh, you see that there, there was no hell, there was no heaven, wouldn't you feel that you wasted 80 years of your life just living the God, so-called God way? Wouldn't you regret? The mama answered, if I die one day and if I find out that there is a heaven and there is a hell, I would be glad that I wouldn't waste it. I would be glad that I didn't waste all these years. So I would rather be one of those mamas <laughs> who has seen heaven and, and there, uh, would like to live according to the God kind of way and one day realize that there is a heaven and there is an earth. So it's uh, uh, a case of that people have actually uh, seen this um, spiritual world, as it were. Yeah, see, um, let me tell you one thing. I know that uh, somebody watching me might really, you know, listening to me with a very spectacle uh, mindset. But let me tell you one thing. You can take everything from me. You can dilute whatever I said. You can dilute. But there's one thing that you can't take from me. That's my experiences. I know what I went through. I know what God took me through. I know where I stand today. I, my testimony, my, what I went through, what I'm going through, my experiences, nobody can take that away. That's what happened with Joseph. When his brother stole and stripped him off of his coat, he said, you can take and snatch what is on the outside, but you can't snatch something that's on the inside. So the experience that I had with my God, my supreme being, my almighty, is an inner experience which the devil cannot steal with all his ideologies, or rather worldly ideologies. It's much deeper than that. It is. Tell us of some of those uh, experiences that you have had with God. Oh, plenty, plenty, plenty. Um, every time there, God makes me do something that I would not do. 
Uh, and I've seen that uh, all, all across the Bible. God, want, lo God loves to challenge people. He, he wants you to do something which you have never done. He said, Moses, now you are in front of the Red Sea. Raise the rod and watch what I do. There he opens the Red Sea. He always wants you to believe the impossible. That's when, that's happen, that happens when you really believe the invisible. So as I walk with God each day, I see things that would never happen for me start happening. Doors that would never open for me start opening. So with God, it's every day a supernatural day, a miraculous day. Some miracles have hap happened in your life. Each moment. What would you say is the biggest miracle? Oh, well, I know you was delivered from nicotine. That's a big miracle. The biggest miracle in my life is when Christ accepted me. Not when I accepted Christ. Christ accepted me as his son. That is the biggest, biggest, biggest miracle and in incomparable. I cannot even compare it with any other thing that has ever happened in my life. Christ means everything. We're going to hear more from uh, you, Robin. So uh, stay tuned to this uh, channel and uh, we'll be right back after this break. Pastor, being a man of God, is a calling. It's not a career. So there is no retirement in this. Prayer does not change the plan of God. But we have to understand that if God has a plan for our lives, even the devil has a plan for our lives. My definition about God uh, will not change anything about God. And your opinion about God does not matter. 